Hi, my name is Amber Kivett. I'm a sports medicine professional as well as a human performance specialist with Life Pro World Class Recovery Tools. Today I'm excited to share with you our newest release, the Flex Cycle Under the Desk Bike. So let's talk about what's included in the box. We have the main head unit, we have some resistance bands, we have a tether strap which is used in order to keep your seat closer to the unit when you're using it for your feet. We have the different stabilizer bars for the front and for the back. We have two different kinds of pedals, so it's bonus. We have one style of pedal which can be used for hands or for your feet, hence the straps for your feet. And we also have a foot specific pedal that has a strap that keeps it over your shoe so that you can stay grounded to the unit. You're also gonna have batteries that come with you're also going to have your bolts, your washers, and your cap nuts for putting the stabilizer bars in place. And we've already provided you with every possible tool you'll need with this one multi-tool. So let's go ahead and put it together and then I'll explain to you how wonderful this unit works for a variety of different goals. We're going to start over here at the front. You're going to take your multi-tool and two of your bolts, washers, and cup cap nuts. We're going to move all of those supplies out of the way so you've got some room to work. You're going to see there's a sticker on here that says up. That's going to go underneath the front of the unit. This unit only weighs about 19 pounds, so pretty user friendly for you if you're at home by yourself to put things together. And from here, there are going to be two little holes on the back side of the frame in which you can slide your bolts through. So we're going to take the cap nuts and the washer off and we're just going to slide it from up underneath. So it's gonna go up underneath until you feel it poke through. And there we go. And it should click into position. From here, we're gonna slide the washer on. And then you're gonna take your cap nut and go ahead and get it started. And then you'll use your multi-tool in order to finish tying it down. I'm going to go ahead and finish that after I have the second one applied so we can tighten them at the same time. So on the other side, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're taking your bolt, you're finding where the hole is right here on the front. You're going to slide that through and you're going to reference it to the top. Right here is the hole for the top. You might have to slide your finger there so you can actually feel it pop through like such. And then you're going to turn the bolt just enough that it pops right through. Now you're locked in. So take your washer, slide it over the top, your cap nut, go ahead and screw that on just as much as you can get it through there. And then we're gonna use the multi-tool to finish off the stabilizer. So you're gonna find there's different increments. So you're gonna have to find which one, that one's too big, works for the specific area that you're trying to tighten down. So you're going to turn it towards you if you're facing it. If you're facing on the other side of it, you're going to turn it to the right. So it's going to be more clockwise. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're going to tighten that down until we can't turn any longer. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side, making sure that it's nice and stable because we want to make sure these have got grippers on them. We want to make sure that the bike doesn't try and get away from you because the stabilizers aren't fastened down tight enough. And it can take, if you're not used to using tools, I'm not used to using tools, but if I can use tools, anybody can use tools. So you don't have to have somebody assemble this for you. It doesn't matter how young or old you are or how user friendly are you with tools. We provide you everything you need for a very user friendly experience. So we got the front done. Now we're going to swing around here to the back side. I'm going to move these little extra attachment points out of the way so we have room. You're going to see we have an up sticker. The up sticker is going to go right there just like that. And you'll know if you've got it right or wrong because if you get it wrong, let me show you what happens. If you get it wrong, nothing lines up. There's no holes there for your bolts to come through. So the up is always going to be facing to the outside. And that up is also another indication that you're going to take your, your bolt and you're going to run it up through the bottom of the stabilizer bar to make sure that you're able to fasten everything together appropriately. 
So starting here on the outside, so you can all see, we're gonna run this up underneath. There's a little hole there, and you can see the hole up top. And I'm gonna rotate it just enough until I can get it to lock in. I'm gonna hold my finger underneath here to keep it there. Washer goes on, and you'll, you're gonna see how it's form-fitting. So if I don't get the washer on just right, it doesn't go flush with the actual units. You gotta make sure that it sits completely flat. And then we're gonna take that cap nut and you're gonna screw it, remember, righty-tighty, clockwise. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Run it up, as the sticker, sticker says, and you're gonna look in the top and see if you can find it. If you can't see it, go for and feel it. So there we got it all the way through, locking it down, taking the final cap nut, rotating, righty-tighty, clockwise. Now we're gonna take that multi-tool, figuring out which end is right. And again, if you're not tool friendly like I am, then it's gonna be a little trial and error to make sure that you get the right end up. And until you can't turn it any further, just make sure you get it nice and tight and secure so that everything stays where it's supposed to. And from here, we're gonna go one more full crank to get it locked down. That's as good as it gets. Now, as you're gonna notice, here on the front, we have the battery compartment, which goes underneath of our panel for telling us kind of the different features as far as what kind of measurements we're using to get a workout with the, with the flex cycle. So you're gonna pop that out. Don't pull, just nice and easy because on the underside of this, you're gonna see that there's wiring there. So if you try and pull it apart, you're gonna disengage those wires. So you don't wanna pull on the hatch there on the main screen, but you already have batteries that come with it. And you're just gonna match your batteries up as the picture is shown on the back side, and make sure that they click in nice and tight. And you'll hear it click if you get them in right. If you don't get them in right, it won't work. So everything should be on. If we push this blue button, everything should light up, which it does. So we know we've got it right. Well, now we've got it put together. I know it's tiresome, right? It's okay, we're almost there. So now we gotta decide whether we wanna use foot pedals or whether we want to use the combo hand foot pedals. If you have a really big foot, it might be a little hard for you to get comfortable with using this one. So if you're using it for the purpose of using it with your legs, whether it's a total knee replacement, total hip replacement, just trying to keep circulation into your legs if you're sitting underneath, if it's sitting underneath of the desk, you're gonna use the pedal attachment for your shoe, which has a band that comes over the, cr over the cross, the top, and it anchors in on this little point. So if you're wanting to use this, then you can use this specifically for if it's on the floor and you're using it underneath the desk. If you're wanting to use it for your upper body, which is how I'm going to demonstrate it first, you're gonna use the combo pedal, which has the strap for your foot if you choose to use it for the foot, or you can use the actual pedal for your hand and how you grip. And it's got grooves in there, so you've got a good grip. So as you're gonna find here, it says R for right, and it's gonna say L for left. And we've saved you the trouble of figuring out right from left. So your levers are also labeled R and L. So this one is a little bit more challenging than the cap nuts and the bolt was because this spins. So if you try and turn it, th uh, threading it into the lever here, you're actually going nowhere real fast because you're turning it, but it actually doesn't thread into the lever. So you have to use your multi-tool. Again, make sure you figure out which end is right. This one's too small because that's the end we used for this one. So we're gonna flip it over to the other head and that one should fit in there nice and easy. So make sure you know where that goes first. So your right is gonna match up with your right. Something that I have figured out to make this easier is if you start with the lever all the way to the top, then you can just keep the tool working and you don't have to continue to reposition it. So once you get everything in here and we start threading the pedal, you're gonna feel whether it's locked in or not or whether you're just hanging out here, going nowhere real fast with just moving the pedal. And right there, you're gonna see like it's, it's starting to lock in. So I'm, if I'm standing behind the unit, 
I'm rotating it towards me, so righty tighty. We're gonna take the top of the tool and we're gonna find where it locks in. And from here, very carefully, I'm gonna just rotate hand for hand in order to lock it down. It doesn't matter if the pedal spins because I'm not trying to control the spin. I'm trying to control the threading process of the actual pedal. And so there we have, it's locked in and you can still move the pedal. So if you choose to put your hand on the pedal or if you choose to use your foot or if you choose to keep the straps underneath of you and just go on top without the strap, either way, you're locked and ready. Now we have to do it for the other side. We're gonna take the pedal and we're going to put it on in there. So let me, let me share with you a little, a little tip and trick. If you take this strap, because it's gonna get in your way potentially, and just pull it to the side, then you can have better access without the strap constantly flapping at you. And I'm trying to get this a little bit tighter until I can't get it any tighter, and that's when I'm gonna use the multi-tool. And we're gonna grip on there, and because I've got this pedal all the way to the top, and again, I'm gonna pull this to the inside so that I'm not fighting that strap. We're gonna get it as tight as we can go, and now when it gets too tight, or you can't go any further, then the pedal actually will take off, okay? When you're putting the pedal on the lever, so pedal on the lever, there is a chance that you're gonna get a little bit of grease on your fingers like I have on mine. It will wash off with soap and water, but we just wanna make sure that you have your area prepped so that you're not using it on fresh carpet or on your furniture or on a nice area where you don't want any oil or potential staining. Um, so just to give you a heads up on that, because we're not responsible for replacing your carpet if you happen to get oil on it from our device, but just a little tip. So from here, as we are continuing to get this thing ready to roll, you have your bungee strap, straps that have the little clips. Those are gonna go on the back end here. And you can choose to use those or you don't have to use those. Um, now let me make sure I clarify this because these are being used for upper body strength. You cannot stand and pedal on this bike like you can if you're at a spin class or if you are riding your own bike at, at, out and about. So don't get too confused and think that you can balance on the pedals while you do some bicep curls. That's not the idea of that. But nonetheless, if you decide that you wanna take a break from pedaling and you wanna do some curls or some upright rows or some flies, then you can do that with the handles or if you decide that you wanna create some tension while you're pedaling, there's a variety of different things that you can do or you just eliminate them completely so that you don't have them getting in your way and they just clip right off super easy, super quick. And so let me show you how this works. So if we look at the front here, we have our control panel. And when we push this blue button, we have a different variety of settings that come up that it's measuring. We have our RPM, which is gonna tell you your current workout speed and strides per minute. You're gonna have a scan button. So each time that you push this, you're gonna see this little arrow scrolling across until it stops whenever you stop pressing the button on the area of measurement. So right here, we are on, we've got one area that's blinking on time and we've got one area that's blinking on scan. If you have the arrow that is showing your scan, it's automatically going to transfer through or scroll through each and every component of measure as opposed to just staying on the active screen. In order to see time and all these different things change up, you have to be moving the pedals even though it is scrolling through. So as we push the blue button again, it's gonna scroll over to time, which is the amount of time that you are in the current workout, the duration of time. We push it again, and that says a CNT. That is the number of strides in your current workout, okay? Not speed, but so because speed is strides per minute, we're actually wanting to know how many strides you've done in your current workout. Why is that important? Because if you have a different concept in trying to set certain goals with what you're wanting to do with your flex cycle, um, let's say you're not using it for mobility or for joint stiffness, you're just wanting to exercise a little bit more, you can use your strides per workout or your strides per minute speed as an indicator of how hard you're working or how much harder you want to work based on what you're feeling with your cardiorespiratory fitness level. So from there, we can push the button and you're gonna see it light up on DIST, which is the current distance that you have traveled. 
From there, we push the button again for calories. Now, I want to make sure you understand, this is not 100% accurate on calorie expenditure. So if you're wearing a heart rate monitor with your device or your app that you're working with, make sure and rely on that for reliability versus using our calorie counter. It's just a generalization, but as long as you're consistently following your calorie output, um, you can use that as a way to set goals for maintaining your fitness levels with the flex cycle. We're gonna push T, C, and T, T dash C and T, and T dash C and T is total number strides across all of your workouts. So it is accumulation of how many strides you've been using for the time that you've been on the unit over several days. So if you decide that you want to change and reset that, you're gonna push and hold that blue button for four seconds and you're gonna see the screen change and now you've reset everything so the memory is completely gone. So don't do that unless you're actually ready to do that because that's not fun when you're trying to remember what you've already done and it's gone. So the next thing that we wanna show you is the feature of our tension control. That's how hard you're actually going to be working and that's how much these different components of measurement are going to change. So if you are just starting, we wanna stay low level with a level of one. And if you're a weekend warrior go-getter and you're wanting to really um, increase the intensity of your workouts for cardiorespiratory fitness, or maybe you're just wanting to increase in your muscle size and capacity, you're gonna increase that dial up to a number eight by just rotating it and you're gonna hear it click each and every time until you get yourself as far as over as it'll go, and that's the highest level that you can do. I'm just gonna give you a little testimonial. I've been playing around with this little guy for a couple weeks now. I haven't made it to an eight just yet, so if you think you're a diehard go-getter, don't jump out there and try an eight, because I can do all kinds of things, but eight is really, really hard to do. We don't want you to hurt yourself unless you're interested in buying a massage gun just for fun. Like, don't do that. So we go back down, going back to a one, what is really cool about this, and one of my favorite features about this, is that if I turn the unit towards me, let's say I'm having shoulder pain, or my neck is stiff, or I'm just wanting to get uh, blood flow, we've got carpal tunnel or tennis elbow. One of the great things, if you find that you don't like these strips, because it is used for foot or for hand, then it does come off, the strips do come off with a Phillips head screwdriver. Sometimes they can get a little annoying to me, so I would much rather do without them when I'm using it for my hands. But if you want to do away with them, and, but you need them for your feet, you can put them right back on there with your Phillips head screwdriver, which does not come with the unit. Just make sure that you keep close eye of your, those screws so that you don't lose them for when you want to put them back on. But as you are getting comfortable here, I'm going to just nice and relax my shoulders, and I'm just using my arms to move the pedals away from my body to get started. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this towards you so that you can see the unit of measure as it's working. And so here we are, if you can see here on the front panel, right now it's measuring it in calories and it just switched to total strides. So, and you can hear how that strap is rubbing over the lever. So again, if you have to pull the strap to the inside or if you have to take the straps off, you can do that. So we're rolling, we're pedaling, okay? And let's say that you're really feeling good here, but you know there's still something going on with your neck and your shoulders, we can go backwards, okay? So you can also go backwards and it continues to keep track. So if you go forwards and you have so many strides on there for total number of strides, it's not gonna subtract your strides if you go backwards. It continues to add. So we're going back, and okay, so I'm warming up, feeling pretty good, right? So we're gonna increase our intensity to a three. That's not even considered moderate yet, but I'm gonna grip those handles, unless you wanna try going with the handles on top. Again, until you get things loosened up, you're gonna have to kind of control the straps. And as you can see, this is much more labor intensive, really hard. So come on, don't strain your neck and shoulders just by trying to be the tough one in the group. Make sure you're playing it safe. But for those of you who have neck, shoulder, you're wanting to get rid of this extra roll here um, on your side or you're wanting to work on more of your tummy, um, 
it works really, really well for upper body work, but most importantly, works really good for upper body pain if you're trying to find mobility. You've got frozen shoulder syndrome, you've got a rotator cuff injury. Just getting things loose, again, keep it low because it's not how strong you are, it's more how fluid you can be pain free. So. Um, I'm going to take the pedals off and I'm going to show you how to use it underneath of your desk or in my case I'm going to be sitting on my couch and doing this and then um, we'll go from there. So super easy to switch these out. You're going to go back to that multi-tool, okay? And remember when we were putting the pedals on the levers we used the top end. So we're going to find where it's convenient and if you remember right if I take this all the way to the top, then I don't have to continue to reposition the tool and just be careful swapping one hand to the other and then you don't have to reposition it until it comes completely off, just like that. And then on your foot pedals, you have your foot pedals already labeled with an L. What I highly recommend that you do before you use your foot pedals on the lever, if you're not sure where this strap should be, then go ahead and measure where your strap should be so that you're already ready to go because trying to put the strap on once you're on the lever is quite a bit more challenging. It can be done, but it's more challenging. So just giving yourself a generalization as to where you're going to fit on this and it just slides there over this little tab and it is tough. So once you get it on there, it's on there for a while. But it does take a little bit of extra control and patience. So don't, don't get frustrated with that. You'll eventually get there. So left pedal, left lever. And so again, we're going to get it on there using our multi-tool until we can feel it threading its way through. And there we go. So once you get it started, then you can swap hands with the tool. But if you're not very user friendly with your tools, I, it's taken me a couple of times of practicing this and it gets easier and easier each time. So don't get frustrated, just be very patient or find your neighbor, do something fun for a loved one in order to have them doing it for you. So there's the left. Now I'm going to have to do the same thing with the right. So I'm going to have to remove. And again, we're going to rotate up, slide that on, and give it a little yank so that you can break the tension there. And again, if you try and work the pedal away from you, it doesn't work. You actually have to work from the attachment point onto the lever. And I'm not nearly as efficient with my left hand as I am with my right hand. So that's why it's taking a little bit longer than what it did to putting it together because I'm right-handed. So there we go. Last but not least, the final pedal. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to measure this one. You just have to go back and see how many notches you have on the other pedal. And on mine, I have two. So I'm going to put this on the second notch so that my feet are equal. And again, it comes down to some patience and a little bit of hand power in order to get this to click on. And if you're me, I don't even need to use the straps, but it's nice if you're trying to work on the increase in level or maybe you're a senior citizen, can't keep your foot there, um, and you're trying to do this post rehab, it would be ideal to make sure that you got your strap on there. But definitely as you're doing this the first couple times, the strap, oh, got that heart rate up, right? The strap can be part of the workout, but really important if you are new to this and you're trying to keep your foot on the pedals and you don't have that joint stability yet or that total hip replacement, you're still trying to work through the pain, you don't want to have to think about keeping your foot on the pedal. So find somebody to help you with the strap or just give it a little patience, a little bit of time. So we're going to do the exact same thing, bringing the pedal up, getting it started. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey, however you're facing it. There we go. And we got it. So that's why we include the strap that can be used for your feet or your hands. 
so that um, you don't have to worry about switching out the, the pedals as often as you want to. If you want to use it for your hands or your feet, you can use your hand pedals for your feet. And as long as you don't mind the grit on here, if you wear um, some cotton gloves or you put something on here to make that a little bit softer, you can actually use the foot pedals for your hands. Um, I can demonstrate that really quick, actually. Though not intended for, we got to be creative, right? So you can do the exact same thing. A word of caution, make sure when you're doing this, some of you might wrap your thumb around. You don't want to do that because you're going to get your thumb caught in the lever that will like pinch your finger. It doesn't feel very good. So make sure you keep your whole palm inside the whole pedal. Even if you wrap around, it's really easy to get your thumb caught there. So I like to keep my palm like such so that I'm not going to get my thumb caught in the crank. That does not feel good. And so we're doing the exact same thing. So you can use the foot pedals for hands. You can use the hand pedals for feet, whatever is convenient for you. Um, we just want this to be a very user friendly process for you, providing you a lot of different options for your fitness or your rehabilitation needs. Um, but this is one of my favorite new devices from Life Pro Fitness because so many of you have had shoulder surgeries or you've had total knee replacements or you've had an ankle injury. Um, I've had athletes on this a lot lately with ankle injuries and they are eating it up because they don't have to sit on an Airdyne bike and push hard. They can just sit in the comfort of their home for $150, $200, just depending on um, you know, where we're at with our, with our stock and our sales. But I will tell you, as soon as they get these babies in, they're gone. So if you're thinking about getting one, you need to act now because there's a good chance that we're gonna sell all these pretty quick. So um, stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to use this on your couch or in a big love seat sofa. And I'll also use it um, with one of my um, office chairs so that if you're using it underneath of a desk, you can see how you can use the tether strap to, to keep it close to you as you're pushing the pedals forward. It'll try and push your body away, but the tether strap keeps you put. So stay tuned and we're gonna be right back. So as you're gonna see, we are all situated here so we can be in a seated position with your legs underneath of your desk or whether you're sitting in a room in a comfy chair. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, most important thing is right now we are in carpet so we really don't have to worry about the bike moving away from us if we are sitting in the chair. However, if you have slick floors, um, hardwood, ceramic tile, um, or you know something, some kind of a surface in which the bike doesn't stay put, it comes with this tether strap and uh, you the way you're going to use this is you're going to wrap it around the frame right here there's a little neck here and you're going to bring that around like such and then you can adjust it as you need to but underneath the chair you're going to anchor it here to the base so for my chair and my distance since i'm short I'm gonna make the strap long enough that it clicks into position because this is my comfort zone. So you wanna make sure you know where your chair should be and then go ahead and clip it together. And then when you get in to your chair, as you get yourself positioned and you figure out where your feet should be with the angle that you want your knees. Um, if you are wanting to work more into the hips and the quads, you're gonna have a little bit less knee bend. So when you're pushing away, we're working more through here and into the hips. If I get more onto the unit, then you can cinch this down a little bit more. And it doesn't necessarily have to be tight. It just keeps the bike from moving away from you. So now, if I'm doing the, the cycling from here, I'm getting more lower leg action as well as hip action right through here. So it depends on where you're wanting to work from as to where you position yourself with the bike. Maybe you just wanna sit back and chill out, watch some TV and enjoy a nice little workout. No excuses, it's an easy way to keep everything moving. Now, you can see where I have attached the cables. The biggest problem you're going to find is when you are pedaling, if you're pulling the straps, you're going to end up in rubbing the straps over your toes or your feet. So in order to do this one, you're going to have to move yourself a little bit closer and you might just do front raises. Okay. Or maybe you do 
lateral raises, okay? Or maybe you do upright curls. But the one thing that you're not gonna be able to do is pulling because we don't want this cable to brush with the feet. The priority of this exercise unit is pedaling. So, and I'm sitting a little bit low for this. Let's go ahead and adjust. So as you need to adjust your stool, based on the height, wherever you wanna be, again, however tall you are or however you are positioned to and from the bike is how hard you're going to work. Right now, I'm on a level three, not too bad, but you remember how I told you like those weekend warriors level eight? That's not me, but let's pretend like it is. And we are pushing hard, pushing, pushing. Yes, yeah, so you get the idea, this is like a lot of work. So you can't be too strong for this unit. Like it is really good for anybody, all age groups, all ability levels, whether you are a teenager or a youngin trying to stay more active at school or after school, or whether you are an older individual recovering from surgery and just trying to keep things moving for blood flow circulation and lower levels of inflammation. Now I'd like to take the time to show you on page nine of your user manual how you can integrate Bluetooth with the different fitness apps available with this device. So make sure you turn on the camera on your phone and turn to page nine in your user manual to highlight whichever app that you would like to use. And in today's example, we're going to be using FitShow. Okay, so as you're gonna see on page nine of your manual, you have the option of installing one of these fitness apps to manage your workouts. For those of you who are not familiar with downloading apps or trying to locate the apps within your device, you're gonna tap onto your camera button. And this is specifically with the iPhone that I'm using today. And you're gonna take your camera and I'm going to just demonstrate how to use FitShow. You're gonna take your camera over and you'll see it's going to focus in on FitShow. There it came up. And then from there, it's gonna take you to iFitShow, which is automatically gonna take me to the Apple app, and then I can download it from there. Once you download it, it's gonna pop up, and you're gonna to have to fill out a user account. And one of the things that you're gonna need after you enter in all your information is gonna ask you for a code. That code is a confirmation code that you're gonna get from your email, from them that, they, that they've received your information. So you're gonna take your FS code, you're gonna copy that, and plug it back into the user ID information box that's asking for a code, and that is what will activate your account. Once you do that, you are good to go. You're gonna choose indoor workout. There we go. And you're gonna see that the flex cycle comes up. And then once I hit start and put my feet in the pedal, and now it's ready, and you're gonna see it on the device as well, and it's ready to go. So now, I can compete with my friends, with my family and colleagues in this little fitness competition because the app is tracking everything that I'm using on the unit as far as measurement markers go. And so you can become more integrated with your friends. You can share, you can save, you can chart, all kinds of things. The, the, the options are endless when you're using the different fitness apps. Now that's just one way of how you can integrate a fitness app with the flex cycle. But I want you to remember, we've got three different fitness apps. So the Wift, Ride and Run, and Kino Map are also options. And you're gonna download those exactly the same. So you're gonna go back to your camera and you're going to highlight the app using your camera. And as you can see, there it comes up. And then you're gonna go to the Apple Store if you have an Apple, and then you can download it and then create your user account and then it integrates perfectly with the Bluetooth operation within the flex cycle. With that being said, thank you so much for the time in watching me demonstrate to you how to use the new flex cycle under the desk bike, and we look forward to hearing how it works for you at home. Have a great day.